I'm going to show the likely places a homeowner will find water shutoff valves and go over a few important maintenance tips. Hopefully you'll find stop valves at each plumbing fixture. If there is a shutoff valve below each fixture, it makes it easier to isolate the water supply when a repair is needed. The other benefit is that if there's a plumbing problem, maybe a toilet that keeps running, the water to that individual toilet can be shut off and the rest of the plumbing in the house can continue to be used. To close this shutoff valve, it needs to be turned clockwise multiple times until you feel a little bit of resistance and then maybe turn it another quarter turn to tighten it and that should turn off the water. To open, simply turn it counterclockwise until it's fully open. And when you feel resistance, stop and then turn it clockwise, maybe uh, just an eighth of a turn. This shutoff valve only needs to be turned a quarter turn to close it. If there are shutoff valves for the tub and shower, they are likely to be found in an access panel that is located on the wall directly behind the valves for the tub and shower. This access panel is inside a closet that's behind the shower wall. Below this sink is a hot and cold shutoff valve. These valves operate the same way as the multiple turn one on the toilet. It's a good idea to exercise the valves in your house. I turn all of mine two times a year. To exercise a valve, fully close it and then open it again. This is the shutoff for the garden hose spigot in the garage. Evidently, nobody had turned it for many years and it is frozen in the open position. By the way, if you find this video helpful, a thumbs up is always appreciated. One of the benefits of periodically turning the valves in the house is that you get a chance to look for potential problems. And you can see that at this connection of the supply line, I have some green corrosion. And that tells me that the rubber connection is starting to fail and that I need to replace this line before it starts to leak. One of the things that may happen when you turn these types of valves is you may find some drops of water that start to leak at the stem. To fix that you simply need to turn this packing nut maybe about a quarter of a turn clockwise to tighten it up and the dripping should stop. If tightening the packing nut doesn't stop the dripping, then the valve has to be repacked with Teflon rope or some valves need a washer. When I exercise my valves, I perform an additional test. I close them all the way. I open the valves on the fixture above and make sure that the shutoff valves are functioning correctly and that it does turn the water off. That's an important extra step to take, especially on this kind of valve, because there's a rubber washer inside here that tends to deteriorate. And once that washer deteriorates, the valve won't shut off properly. There should be a shutoff valve above the water heater. My main water shutoff valve for the entire house is located in the basement. It enters the wall about four feet below ground level. I live in a cold weather climate and the water pipes have to be buried below the frost line so that they don't freeze in the winter. I have a two minute video that shows how to find a main shutoff valve. When this video is over, click on the channel name, Know How Now, to find it. This 65 year old valve will no longer turn the water off to my house. That's why it's very important to test this valve. I'm in the process of replacing it with a ball valve and the ball valve will just take a quarter turn to turn the water off. Because I have municipal water, there's an additional valve at the front curb of my property. It's called a curb stop. 
This cover can be removed. A special tool is needed to reach about four feet below to turn the water off to my house. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.